September 1939, the English countryside. Its most important crop, English countrymen. Sunday, September the 3rd, in the middle of harvest, comes news of war. Now what will war mean to the countrymen? What will war mean to the land? Here is Fred Martin's farm at Clopton in East Anglia. On Sunday evening, Mr. Martin is at Woodbridge meeting a train. Here comes a car, Mary. I do hope they sent us a nice clean child. This is the BBC Home Service. Tell Dad to hurry or he'll miss the news. Dad, the news! Fred Martin not only farms well, what? he pulls his weight in all sorts of ways. Hello. Hello. My name's Mary. My name's Ken. I come from Holloway. Hope you're going to like it in the country. Well, Mother, there's the new visitor. Has been launched. The Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries has appointed a War oh. Agricultural Executive Committee for each county in England and Wales. The Minister has made an order authorising these committees to exercise on his behalf certain powers conferred on him by the Defence Regulations. In a circular letter to the committees, the Minister states that they will be given as free a hand as possible to increase the production of foodstuffs in their areas. Their immediate task is to see that additional land is brought under the plough with all speed. As regards land which has been under grass for at least seven years, the grant of two pounds an acre will now be available for land ploughed up before the extended date of March the 31st next. The minister has appealed to farmers to trust the committees as friends and as men who know their job and to have patience and understanding. Their task is just as vital to national defence as that of the armed forces. Next morning, the War Agricultural Committees are meeting all over the country. Their first job is to get a million and a half acres of grassland ploughed up. This is a big job, a farming job. And believe it or not, it's given over to farmers to tackle, great fellows to talk, and today, eager for action. But how are we going to set about it? By going to our neighbours and persuading them to plough up so much pasture. What was the basis, Mr Turner? Try for at least 10% of the existing grassland. Not only 10%, gentlemen, at least 10%. Ha! That won't make us very popular visitors. Then there's another catch. Some farmers won't have the tackle to plough a foot. A lot of them won't have the money to buy any implements. True. But the county is to be supplied with tractors and ploughs to do the work for such farmers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they divide the counties into districts, the districts into areas, and give each committee member an area round his own farm. Mr. Johns, Mr. Cross, Mr. Cooper, Mr. Thurlow, Mr. Martin. You can see from the map which farmers you have to interview. Well done. What can you give me? Say, 20 acres? Yes, 20. 18 of another field, and five or six in another field, which I might be able to break up later on. Ah, oh, that's an easy start. He's away at Ipswich. I came to see him about ploughing up some more grassland. Well, I don't know how he'll take that. That will mean a tractor, and uh, where's the money to come from? Well, maybe be able to fix that up for him. I'll come back again on Tuesday. Well, there's only 32 acres, and you've got a tractor. What about my cattle and water troughs? Well, that won't be all lost. You'll get the government grant, 64 pounds. I'll give you 64 quid to mind your own business and clear off. How about the field by the wood? No good play on that, it's too wet. Well, do you think a mole drain would do it good? Yes, it would, but who's going to pay for it? 
Well, if you've got a government grant, would you plow? Oh, yes, I'd be glad to. land has become waterlogged, it must first be drained. So the old steam engine pulls the mole drain across the fields. When that's been done, the tractors take charge. Extra tractors mean extra drivers, a job for youth. If you don't buy colts, you've never got horses. But many colts have joined up. So the fillies come to the rescue. Town girls, country girls, the women's land army. First, they have to be trained, for tractor driving isn't an easy job. There, not as simple as a two-seater, is it? Girls, men, tractors, and yes, horses as well. But just as we've mechanized the cavalry, so we've had to mechanize farming. And most of this wartime plowing is done by tractors. Tractors of all sorts, driven by all sorts of people. Tractors in parks and in pastures. Tractors scattered all over the countryside. How they barked and stuttered through September, October, and November. Doing in three months, what it took three years to do during the last war. Martin, how goes it? Oh, fairly well. I got my whack out of nearly everybody on the list. And no back answers? Old Billy Day, he cast a bit, so I let him blow off steam, and then I coaxed him round. Good man. And the work's well in hand? Most of this lot's plowed. I've got 45 acres of uh, Highgate farm. I've got 35 of Red House. I've got nine acres of Shop Farm. But there's one that beats me, that's hopeless, and that is uh, Grove Farm. Grove Farm, almost derelict. This is what happened after the last war to a good many farmers. Well, in the last war, there was three armies have to go away in the war, and that left only three at Tomeo. Two I'm into the army, and I, being, being a fisherman, went into mine sweeping. Because we always used to clip all this here, all these roofs, and make have a stack of two of hay off them. And graze them, had books on them, and they got so bad. During the war, when we come home, they got so bad, we cut the bushes down. When we cut one bush off, because there's six or seven come up, they have been a growing ever since, so I've got the master us now, all together. And now, if the land get the master of you, you better be out on it. There's 130 acres, all grown up with bramble, bushes, 
and is overrun with rabbits. Nothing but a gyre tiller would get it ready for harvest in 1941. Well, suppose we serve a compulsory order on him. Waste of time. He can't do it. The only way is to take the farm over. Isn't there a way of doing that, Mr. Turner? Oh, yes. But suppose we do obtain possession. Who's going to run the job? I will. If you get the powers from London and the gyre tiller, I'll give those bushes what for. It's the Sunday before Christmas, and Mr. Martin has gone to meet Ken's parents. Ken is now at least 90% country, and his hero is Bob the tiller driver. Poor Bob. When he calls to see Mary, Kenny won't let him get away from his machine. There, Ken, it'll go now. Ah, that's a real gyro tiller. Oh, boy, Bob, that's great. I think he's forgotten his parents are coming. They should be here now. Isn't that the car? It is. <laughs> Mum! Looking fine, darling, isn't he? Oh, he is and all. <sighs> well, we don't know how to thank you, Mr. Martin, for... Oh, that's uh, all right, that's all himself. right. He's quite a good kid. Ah, oh, that's the first time I've been on a farm. Ha, ah, that's the trouble nowadays. Come on, Dad. I've got something to show you. Come on. This is Bob. How do you do? Look, Dad. Look at the smashing tractor Bob made me. It's a gyro trailer, like the one he drives. How does it work? Like this. He knows all about it. He would be driving a real one if it weren't for the frost. January 1940, the ground is frozen and the plough lies useless on the headland. But don't think country folk are taking a holiday. This is a chance to do two important things. To thrash out some seed corn ready for sowing to forge the weapons for the spring offensive. Oh, Kenneth, this is the hole where the shear go in. Yes. And the shear cuts and turns the ground over. Yes. Well, how's it going? All right. Uh, tell me you went over to Grove Farm to work. Yeah, we've got permission, haven't we, Kenny? Yes. Just waiting for the snow to clear, then we're going over. Yeah. When the thaw comes, the attack on Grove Farm begins. The countryside has to have drains, just like town. So this is the first job, digging trenches for them. Of course, country drains are laid to suit the land, not people. It's wet, isn't it? Yes, it's wet, and very wet. Mr. Martin, look. Come on, Mary. <laughs> it's a go to us. Oh, we got here. Takes a bit of doing at two miles an hour. Want a bit of chocolate? Well, Bob, here's your bushes. Please, Bob, come over a ride. Okay, come along.
and now at last, Martin has begun to get Grove Farm looking more like his own. After 20 years, the earth gets another chance to produce food instead of brambles. When the first wartime harvest arrives, remember all the work and worry which were put into it. And remember too, that during the last hundred years, we've looked after the land properly, only during periods of war. In September 1939, you asked the countryside to provide you with a safe refuge for your children and security against famine. And both these things it has given you. Now the countryside asks you to do something in return. When peace comes, don't forget the land and its people again.